Welcome to another Advent of Code walkthrough video. Today we'll be looking at 2022 Day 19. Okay, so the wind stops sending lava direct, uh, droplets at us so we can get out of the cave with the elephants. And we notice a bunch of geodes around the pond. Maybe we could use some of the obsidian around us to get some geode cracking robots. To collect the obsidian, you'll need waterproof obsidian collecting robots to get the obsidian from the lava droplets off the bottom of the pond. And fortunately, there's a bunch of clay nearby that we can use to make them waterproof. We'll need special clay collecting robots to get this clay. And to make the clay collecting robots, we'll need a bunch of ore. And to collect the ore, we'll need ore collecting robots. Fortunately, we have exactly one ore collecting robot right now that we can start using. So, here are the necessary specifications. Each robot can collect one of, each, uh, one of its own resource type per minute and it takes exactly one minute for your robot factory to produce a new robot. And crucially, you can only produce one per minute. It consumes the necessary resources available once construction begins, so you cannot use the resources collected during that minute to build the robot in that minute. You need to have them at the beginning of the minute for the robot to appear at the end of the minute. The robot factory has a bunch of blueprints, which we can choose from, but once we've picked one, we cannot change it. So we'll need to figure out which one is the best. So the input format that we're actually given is all on lines like this. So we'll take this and we'll have to uh, get rid of the spaces like that. Okay, yeah. So that gives us our blueprints. And so the elephants are starting to look hungry, so we should not take too long. We'll need to uh, spend 24 minutes, and we want to figure out when and what robots to build to maximize the number of geodes we can open. So if we use Blueprint 1, for example, an ore robot costs 4 ore, a clay robot costs 2 ore, an obsidian robot costs 3 ore and 14 clay, and a geode robot costs 2 ore and 7 obsidian. So in the first two minutes, we can't do anything. We just sit here waiting for our existing robot to collect ore. On minute three, we can start building a clay collecting robot using the two ore. We couldn't have done this on minute two because the two ore only showed up at the end of the minute. By the end of the minute, we have one ore because the collecting robot uh, found another one and we have our new clay collecting robot. And so if we keep proceeding like this, eventually using the optimal configuration, at the end of the 24th minute, we will have nine opened geodes. Blueprint two, however, lets us open 12 geodes. And so the quality level of each blueprint will be that blueprint's ID number times the largest number of geodes it can open in 24 minutes. So for the first uh, blueprint, it has ID one and can open nine geodes, so its quality level is nine. And for the second blueprint, it has ID two and can open 12 geodes, so its quality level is 24. And so the question is, what is the sum of the quality levels of all of your blueprints? So the way we'll approach this is using a depth first search. Essentially at each state, we will try to build each of the possible robots. So we need to make two optimizations to make this run quickly. Uh, the first one I thought of, and it does make it work quickly enough, but for part two, it takes almost two minutes, which is a bit slow. The second one, I looked at Jonathan Paulson's comment on the a solutions mega thread on the subreddit. Uh, he's currently global number two, so it's not hard to find his GitHub and YouTube. Um, so the first optimization we'll want to make is, since we can only build one robot per round, that means that we also have a maximum spend rate. And so we never want to have more robots than the spend rate. So if our most expensive robot in terms of ore is four, uh, let's go to this example. So we can either spend four ore 2 ore, 3 ore, or 2 ore on each turn. So since we can only spend up to 4 ore per turn, we never want to have more than 4 ore robots because we won't be able to spend that. In fact, technically we don't even want to have more than 3 because we, if we build the 4th ore robot, then the only thing we need 4 ore per turn is is for building more ore robots, but that's a bit too complicated of logic to go through. The second optimization, which is the one I borrowed from Jonathan Paulson, is that at each turn, if you couldn't possibly spend 
all of the resources you have by the end, you can just throw out all of the ones that you don't need anymore. For example, if you have 10 rounds left and you have 50 ore, you could only possibly spend 40 of that. And so you can just throw out the remainder. And the reason this is good is because you'll get a lot more states overlapping this way, which means that when you use a cached or memoized DFS, this will result in a lot more states overlapping and therefore being uh, returned from the cache instead of recalculated. Essentially, the observation here is that if you have more resources than needed, your state is, is functionally equivalent. You just need to make sure you don't throw geos because that's the final uh, thing we're counting. Okay. So first we need to get our input format, and this input format is a bit annoying. Um, let's see. So for line in open zero, and actually we'll need the blueprint ID, so we'll do for I line in enumerate open zero. This is just a bit easier than actually reading the number in the blueprint here. So we'll keep track of our blueprint. Um, So for each robot, so for section in line dot split colon space one, so we split on this colon here and get the part to the right. Then we split on spaces, uh, sorry, periods and spaces. And so this will give us our, um, these will give us each of these robot sections on its own. And actually, we should probably be splitting on just a regular period. Um, yeah, give me a second. Okay, actually, we're going to use regular expressions, so it doesn't matter if we have the extra period at the end of our input. So import regular expressions, because now what we're going to do is we're going to grab, we don't need to see what type of robot it is because our input format gives it to us in the order or clay obsidian geode. We just need to get the number followed by the material type. So re dot find all some number followed by space followed by a word. So for each x, y in all of these, this will return a list of matches where each match is going to be a list containing the digit sequence and the words. So x equals int x and y equals uh, or clay obsidian dot index y. So basically x we need to turn it into a number obviously and y instead of storing it as or clay obsidian we'll store them as 0, 1, 2 just so that we can store our states in an array more easily. And so now we do bp dot append. Oh, sorry. Um, recipe equals that recipe dot append x y, and then at the end we do bp dot append recipe. So recipe is the list of required components for the current robot, and bp will be a list that's always for long that contains the data. So if we print out the bp, then we see that our first blueprint is for the first robot, which is the ore one, it costs four of resource zero, which is ore. The clay one costs two of resource zero, which is ore. The third one, which is obsidian, costs three ore and 14 clay. And the geode robot costs two ore and seven obsidian, which is correct. And here we need to add in our optimization for the maximum amount we can spend. We don't need to track this for geos, of course. And so at each, um, each time we read a ingredient required, we can just do max spend of that ingredient, which is y is equal to the max of the current max and the amount we can spend. So if we also print out max spend here, this is telling us that blueprint one, you can at most spend four ore per round, 14 clay per round and seven obsidian per round. And in the second blueprint, you can spend up to three ore per round, eight clay per round and 12 obsidian per round. And this max spend array, 
will be needed for both optimizations. So now let's define our DFS. So we'll need a couple of things. Firstly, we'll need the blueprint. Next, we'll also need the max spend. Thirdly, we'll need a cache. Fourth, we'll need the amount of time left. Fifth, we'll need the list of how many of each type of bot we already have. And finally, we'll need the amount of resources that we have. And so here, what this is going to look like is V is equal to DFS of BP max spend. The cache starts as an empty dictionary. It's time starts at 24. Bot starts at one or, and resources start at all zero. And once we get the amount that, uh, DFS will return the amount of geos that we can produce. Once we get this amount, we can just uh, keep track of a total. Total plus equals I plus one times V, where I is the index given to us by enumerate. So we need to add one to make it start at one. And then at the end, we just print total. Okay, now let's move on to implementing our DFS. So firstly, if there's no time left, then the amount of geodes we can crack is just the amount of geodes we already have. Otherwise, we will get a key, which is going to be the um, the cache, the thing we index into the cache, basically. So if we do it like this, then we take the time, the amount of bots, and the amount of materials, and collapse them all into a nine long tuple. And so if we've already seen this state before, then we can just return it. Otherwise, we'll start with our max value equal to zero. And at the end, once we've done our computation, we will do cache key equals max val and return max val. And so max val will be the maximum possible amount of geodes we can have after each of our possible paths. So how will we compute those paths? Or actually, sorry, max val will start out at the case in which we do nothing. So we really have only five options. Build a ore robot, build a clay robot, build an obsidian robot, build a geode robot, or do nothing. So we'll start with a do nothing state. If we do nothing, then the amount of geodes we'll have at the end is the amount we currently hold, plus the number of geode producing bots times the amount of time remaining. Now let's consider what happens if we build each type of robot. So for i in, for i b in enumerate bp, so i is the index, which is the type of bot, and actually let's call this recipe. For bot type recipe in enumerate blueprint. So bot type is going to be a number from zero to three, representing which type of bot we're building, and recipe is a list of pairs representing how much of each type of resource we need. So the first thing we want to check is, do we even want more of this type of bot? If the number of bots we have for this type is greater than or equal to the amount that we can spend at most, then we can just skip this. And of course, we also need to check that bot type is not equal to three, because we never want to stop building geode robots if possible. So if we're looking at a non-geode robot and we already have enough robots to match our maximum spending rate per round, then we do not need any more of this type of robot. Otherwise, we will determine how long it will take us to wait. So basically the optimization I'm making here is instead of decreasing the time by one each round and just waiting a bunch of extra rounds in between, we will attempt to build the robot see how much time we would need to wait for that robot to become buildable, and then immediately jump to that state if possible. So we'll set the wait amount equal to zero initially. And then for each uh, resource type, sorry, for each resource amount and resource type in recipe, we'll see how long we have to wait. So the amount of time we have, uh, the amount of time we have to wait is the amount of resources we need in addition to what we currently have, divided by the number of bots we have for that resource. So it will be amount of the resource type. Sorry, it will be the amount we need minus the amount that we currently have, divided by the number of bots for that resource type. 
And now this will result in a zero division error because it's possible that we don't have any bots. So if there are no bots for that type, then we know that we cannot possibly build the bot we're currently aiming to build, no matter how long we wait. So we need to take this, and of course we need to take the ceiling. We don't want to take the floor because we have to build either as many resources needed or more. We can't build less. So a quick hack to take the ceiling division is to just use floor division, but negative. So floor division always rounds down and not towards zero. So if you negate it, then it will round away from zero. So you can negate it, floor it, and then uh, negate it again. And so this will be the ceiling division. This is hacky and you should probably be using math.seal for readability, but I just use this to save time writing. So weight equals the maximum between weight and this. So it's possible that this number is actually negative, because if we have more than enough resources, then r minus amount of our type is going to be a negative number. But that doesn't matter because weight is already going to be at least zero here. So if um, so something you might not know about Python loops is that you can put an else statement after a loop. And the else statement runs if the part before it did not break. So if the loop was empty, it will run. And if the loop ran, ran until completion, then the else block will also run. So the break will skip over the else block. So the intuitive way to think about it is this else is just at the end of the for, it's like the last iteration, but not really an iteration, and break exits the entire structure, including the else. So if we are able to wait for this robot, then we will say that the amount of time remaining after we build this robot is going to be time minus wait minus one. If the amount of time remaining is less than or equal to zero, then we can just skip this robot type because even if we can like we even if we can build it with one at the end of the last minute, it won't produce anything. So there's no point attempting to. Otherwise, we will compute a new amount and bot array. So bots equals we'll put an underscore after it just to indicate that it's a temporary array. And by the way, this syntax here is the Python list slice. So this means slice from the beginning to the end. And so we're essentially just cloning the array. Okay, so now let's time warp ahead by wait uh, minutes. So amount, the n amount of material we have at the end of these wait minutes is going to be x plus y times wait uh, so I guess wait plus one because we're also waiting the extra minute to build the robot for x, y in zip amount bots. So basically what we're saying is for each resource type, x is the amount we currently have and y is the number of bots we have for it. And so the amount that we'll have after waiting for wait plus one minutes is going to be the amount we currently have plus the number of bots for it times the amount of time. Okay, next we need to spend the resources to build the bot. So for our amount, our type in recipe, the temporary amount for that type will be decreased by the amount needed. And finally, we'll also increase the amount of uh, bots we have for type B type by one. And now we do our DFS. So here's where the second optimization kicks in, the one I took from Jonathan. We throw any excess resources. So for i in range 3, the amount we have for that type is equal to the minimum of the amount we actually have and the amount we could possibly have. So the amount we could possibly need is the max spend rate. Um, for that type minus the number of bots for that type uh, times the number of rounds left. So what this is basically saying is 
the amount of resources we need to hold on to is the amount we consume per round. The amount of con uh, we consume per round is the maximum spend rate minus the generation rate. Because if we're already generating resources at the same rate that we spend them, we can just throw out all of our remaining resources. Uh, the only thing is, though, that the amount of... Uh, actually, you know what? This optimization seems a bit finicky. I'll just leave out that part. I'll just say that the maximum amount we want to keep is the spend rate times the amount of time remaining. This is technically a bit subpar, but it should be okay. Okay, and now we just do our DFS. So our DFS requires our blueprint, the max spend rate, the cache, the amount of time remaining, the number of bots we have of each type, and the amount of resources we have for each type. So I somewhat feel like I've made a bug somewhere, but let's just give this a try. No? You're telling me I got it right first try? Okay, even I'm surprised by that. Okay, so that gives us our test answer of 33 and our puzzle answer of 1115. So just to quickly recap, because the solution is a bit confusing. The core of the logic is that each step we can either do nothing and just wait until the end of our time period to see how many geos we'll have by then. Alternatively, for each bot type, if it's not a geode bot and we already have uh, and we don't already have enough, then we will see how long we have to wait in order to accumulate enough resources to build that bot type next, and then we will calculate the state if we take that path. And the first optimization we make is this one, we don't build excess bots. And the second optimization we make is this, we throw any extra resources that we don't need, which just brings our states closer to zero, so we'll have more of a possibility of hitting our cache. Moving on to part two. The elephants found some food on their own, so you're not in as much of a hurry. You figure that you probably have 32 minutes before you'll need to get out of range. Unfortunately, one of the elephants ate most of your blueprint list, so now only the first three blueprints on your list are intact. And so the problem is now basically saying for the first three blueprints, only compute the number of geodes you can crack open in 32 minutes. And instead of quality levels, just t multiply the three numbers together. Okay, so we take our enumerate, uh, open zero, we cast the inside to a list, and then we just slice it to only get the first three. We change our time remaining to 32. We change our total to start at one, and then we just, instead of adding the quality score, we just do total times equals V. And we can also get rid of the enumerate because we no longer need the recipes index. So this part does run a bit more slowly, uh, just because even though we're reducing the number of lines by t uh, tenfold, we also are going a lot deeper with our DFS, which is going to take up a lot more time. But hopefully this shouldn't take ridiculously long. I'll pause the video just so you don't have to wait. Okay, so it's taking a bit too long. So I decided to just run it using PyPy. So by default, I run my stuff using C Python, but PyPy, which is an alternative implementation of Py uh, Python, does typically run a bit faster. So if I run it with PyPy, um, let's just time it to see how long it takes. This takes uh, a lot more reasonable of an amount of time. And I'm not exactly sure of the details between CPython and PyPy. I'm not really all that good with uh, like that in-depth knowledge of Python, but I do know that it runs faster and usually consumes less memory. Okay, so 14 seconds. So not fast, but not bad compared to most of the solutions I've seen. Okay, so that gives us our puzzle output of 25,056, and I'm not going to bother running on the test input. So for this part, we really didn't change all that much. We just remove, only took the first three lines, changed the amount of time remaining to 32 minutes, and multiplied the total instead of adding. But even though the first two optimizations weren't really necessary for the part one, they were absolutely crucial for part two. Uh, 
Jonathan's optimization saved a roughly reduced my input t uh, my runtime tenfold. Like when I was solving this during the contest, uh, my solution took 113 or so seconds to run, but just adding in Jonathan's optimization brought it down to like 13 seconds. The most crucial one though was the optimization. Actually, maybe not most crucial, but the optimization to not build excess bots also did save a lot of time. But honestly, my solution ran in a reasonable amount of time for part one, just using this approach of um, jumping states by scanning ahead for the, how long we have to wait for each bot. Okay, well, that's all for today's video. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed and learned something, and I'll see you tomorrow for day 20.